Imagine yourself over three million years ago on the African savanna, long before cities or writing existed. This was the true beginning of human technology, the very first Stone Age. According to Britannica, the Stone Age is defined by the creation and use of stone tools, and it began some 3.3 million years ago when our ancestors first learned to chip rocks into useful shapes. Archaeologists call those earliest tools the Old Darwin Toolkit. Simply sharp-edged pebbles and flakes struck from larger stones, these crude cutting tools were used by hominins like Homo habilis to cut meat, break bones for marrow, and process plants, which really helped early humans stay ahead of predators and scavengers. During these ancient times, Earth was a very different place. Much of the world was in and out of ice ages, and colossal mammals like woolly mammoths, giant ground sloths, mastodons and saber-toothed cats roamed the land. Early Stone Age humans lived as nomadic hunter-gatherers in small bands, constantly on the move, following herds and seasonal plants. Every day was a survival challenge. You might carefully approach a great bison with that chipped stone knife, or dodge a hungry cave lion while gathering berries. As the stone tool technology slowly improved, it made all these tasks easier. Stone tools did not remain primitive for long. Over hundreds of thousands of years, hominins learned to make finer and more versatile implements. One key innovation was the hand axe a teardrop-shaped stone sharpened on both sides. By about one million years ago, species like Homo erectus were skillfully flaking stones on both faces to create these resilient tools. Hand axes and related tools were the Swiss army knives of the Paleolithic, usable for butchering animals, cutting wood or plants, even digging up edible roots. Such innovations steadily improved hunting and gathering. Over time, the trend was clear. Humans went from simple cobble choppers to specialized flaked tools in a long trajectory of technological progress. By the end of this chapter of history, humanity had mastered stone toolmaking. Groups like Homo erectus had even learned to control fire and migrate out of Africa into Eurasia still. For nearly three million years, stone remained the primary material for human technology, laying the groundwork for future innovations. As millennia passed, multiple human species shared the planet. Neanderthals occupied Europe and the Middle East. Homo sapiens evolved in Africa. And other hominins, like the Denisovans, appeared in Asia. They all relied heavily on stone tools. They developed techniques to make sharper blades and spear points, improving hunting effectiveness. Rather than mere novelty, stone tools defined daily life. For instance, archaeologists have found stone cutting tools in East Africa dating back about 2.6 million years, confirming that tool use was fundamental to our survival. Life in the Ice Age meant adapting to harsh climates. Around 800,000 years ago, Homo erectus and later Neanderthals and sapiens invented stone-tipped spears and throwing sticks, making mammoth hunts more efficient. They built wooden shelters and clothing, but stone flints were crucial for lighting fires and processing food. One summary notes that during this period, people used stone tools to cut, pound, and crush, making them better at extracting meat and other nutrients from plants and animals. Indeed, these advances helped humans thrive amid megafauna. Our ancestors hunted giant deer, bison, and even mammoths with their sharper tools. Meanwhile, Homo sapiens were spreading out of Africa into Asia and Europe. Each migrating group carried its Stone Age toolkit and adapted it to local environments. New stoneworking styles, like the Orignation blades, emerged in Europe. In Asia and Australia, people produced microliths. 
These are tiny flaked stones, used as composite arrowheads or barbs. Throughout these movements, the evolution of stone tools accelerated, a kind of broad-spectrum revolution where humans began to exploit a wider range of foods, from fish and shellfish to wild grains. By about 12,000 years ago, this diversification set the stage for the next great change, farming. Around 50,000 years ago, a spectacular transformation occurred. Homo sapiens underwent an upper Paleolithic cultural flowering. Humans painted caves, carved figurines, and composed music. These were practices that reveal a symbolic mind, very like our own. The earliest known Stone Age art dates to roughly 40,000 years ago. This was during this Upper Paleolithic period. Around that time, people painted vivid scenes of horses, bison, and deer deep inside caves, like Lascaux in France or Altamira in Spain. These images were thought to represent hunting success, spiritual beliefs, or community stories. These cultural artifacts show that late Stone Age humans had complex social rituals. They buried their dead with tools and ornaments, suggesting ideas of an afterlife. They made music. Flutes of bone and ivory have been found dating 35,000 years old, and they dyed and sewed clothing. Even language was likely well developed by this era. All this happened long before written history. It's a dramatic chapter of human ingenuity written in stone and bone. Stone Age art and communication peaked during this Upper Paleolithic. By about 10,000 years ago, the last Ice Age was ending. Vast glaciers receded, climates warmed, and large prey animals like woolly mammoths became extinct. Humans everywhere were adapting to new environments. Some groups continued hunting and gathering in forests and grasslands, refining their stone tools. But in a few places, a revolutionary development began. People started domesticating plants and animals, sowing seeds and raising herds. This shift marked the beginning of the end for the purely Stone Age way of life. About 12,000 years ago, in the fertile river valleys of the Near East and elsewhere, Human society started to change radically. Hunters and gatherers became farmers. They planted wild wheat and barley and domesticated goats and sheep. This Neolithic revolution meant groups could settle in one place and grow food instead of wandering endlessly. According to National Geographic, this agricultural revolution is thought to have begun about 12,000 years ago. This coincides with the end of the last ice age. With farming came permanent villages and new types of stone tools. Instead of flimsy flaked blades, Neolithic people ground and polished stones into heavier axes and adzes for clearing forests and building. They built mud brick or thatched houses and developed pottery to store grain and water. An archaeological park reconstruction shows a typical Neolithic Stone Age house. These homes had wooden frames, wattle and orb walls, and thatched roofs, a far cry from the caves and shacks of earlier eras. Communities grew into towns, some with thousands of residents. Neolithic societies also built impressive stone monuments and tools. They erected large communal structures, for example, the stone circles, and tombs at sites like Stonehenge or Newgrange, as expressions of religious and social life, they crafted amazing stone vessels and figures, making life a lot better. People started tending gardens, collecting honey, and weaving textiles. It was a pretty cool time. Yet with agriculture came new challenges, property, labor specialization, and even social stratification. Still, the key is that these peoples were using stone in new ways. Not because metal was absent, 
but because stone was plentiful and well understood after millions of years of refinement. Despite the innovations of the Neolithic, the Stone Age was not eternal. Its decline began with the discovery of metalworking. In different regions over millennia, humans learned to extract and smelt metals. First copper, then bronze, an alloy of copper and tin. According to historians, the Stone Age ended roughly 5,000 to 6,000 years ago when people began making tools and weapons out of bronze. For example, History.com notes that by about 3300 BC in the Near East, humans began working with metal and making tools and weapons from bronze. Similarly, Botanica observes that the Stone Age lasted until metal working arose, after which cultures entered the Bronze and Iron Ages. The shift to bronze technology was gradual. Early metal artifacts were few and precious, used for elite ornaments or simple tools. But as smelting spread, bronze became the new standard for axes, swords, farming implements, and even art. These durable metal tools replaced many stone implements. Once metals could do the work of stone, there was no turning back. In practical terms, stone tools were still used. But stone was no longer the foundation of industry. In this sense, the Stone Age fell not in cataclysm, but by innovation. Our ancestors carried on, but their legacy of carving stones into tools was largely over. Instead of napping flint, the future would involve casting bronze and later forging iron. Vast civilizations like Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Indus Valley, and China were built on the skills honed over millions of years of Stone Age living. The Stone Age spanned roughly 3.3 million years, about 98% of human history. From the first chipped pebble until bronze transformed society, in that time, our ancestors went from cave-dwelling foragers to village farmers and builders. They harnessed fire, language, art, and agriculture, all under the banner of stone tools. Its rise was the story of human ingenuity, learning to use nature's hardest mineral. Its fall was simply the arrival of even better materials. The Stone Age may be over, but its impact endures in every tool we ever made and every sculpture or cave painting it inspired. Thank you.